We're just going to start with the drawing. The only changes I'm going to make is, is obviously we're going to crop some of this out, maybe some of this, and and so th this is going to be the key flower and the bud next to it. Because I like the patterns of light and dark and the variety. Look at the shadows. You know these shadows are way darker than these ones here. You've got these subtle pinks and mauves in the flower. So I've got to keep in mind. I'm going to have a big flower here and then a little room for the bud. So they're the two shapes. I'll just lightly pencil them. And you don't have to be too accurate with the drawing because, you know, flowers change even over a matter of a few minutes. And again, if I've got a mark in the wrong place, I don't rub it out till after I've adjusted it and put it in the right place. Once I've got the basic shape, I'll draw in the shadows. Now, if you do happen to change the pattern of petals, you've got to take that into account when you're doing your shadows. The shadows I'm drawing in are only you know, the hard-edged ones, not the soft-edged ones, because they're going to be indistinct. And it's at this point I decide, am I going to mask this or not? And as soon as I start looking at these complex shapes, then I know I'm going to mask it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm, I'm going to... Just darken a lot of these pencil marks. Not too worried about the shadow ones, but the outlines. Because when I put the masking on, which I'm going to do very soon, the masking will actually lift some of the pencil. And it sort of acts like a eraser. So I'll just run through my process for putting masking on this. So masking fluid is just basically like a liquid latex. When it dries, it stops the paint going through it, which allows you to paint the background really quickly. Um, and then you can remove it. There is some masking fluid that's permanent, which means once you put it on the paper, it's going to stay there. So if you haven't bought any in the past, then uh, just be careful when you do buy it that it doesn't say permanent. Once you're using masking fluid, you only ever use your bad brushes, or, or not your good brushes, because um, the masking fluid will kill them. My basic process is I get some water and dishwashing liquid, a little squirt of that. Just stir that up. And the process is before I transfer the masking fluid onto the paper, dip it in the water and then take out most of the fluid like that. Then go into the, the masking fluid and then we're going to paint with that. So this is one case where I'm not going to wet the back. The reason for that is it would be a wasted exercise because when we come to paint the flower itself, we're going to be painting lots of small sections and, and the cockles just aren't going to be a, a problem. So let's just tape that. So we've done that. The, the next question you ask yourself, what to do with the background? Now, when I do a flower like this, I, I almost always make the background very soft and indistinct. And I try to pick a colour that either harmonises with the flower or contrasts with it. And, and tonally I can do the same. In this case, I'm going to go with a dark background. 
and it's going to be you know blues with a maybe a hint of green in it. So let's get some water. The other thing to keep in mind too is the passage of the light. So it, we can tell from this photo that the light is coming from up here somewhere, right? Maybe in that sort of angle, which is why we're getting these shadows in, in these, this spot. Well, you've got to allow for that in the background. So my idea would be I'll have um, a dark passage with a hint of, of the lighter passage through here. So I'm going to go with a very dark uh, purple colour um, and then maybe just hints of light dull green coming through this way and I'll get a, a big brush say a size 16 so for the background I'm going to go with some French ultramarine A little bit of pink. And a tiny bit of burnt sienna just to dull it, just a fraction. So it's not super bright. Maybe a bit more burnt sienna. I think the colour is right here, but this needs to be stronger in tone. Good, that'll do for that. And then for this greenish passage, just get some Oriolan. A little bit of the cobalt turquoise. Some raw umber, let's dull it a bit. And I'm just adding more paint to thicken it. So what I've got here is I've mixed um, a very strong, almost like a navy blue. So French ultramarine, uh, quite a bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of pink. And then here is just not a bright green, just a little bit dull, almost like the colour of a, a dull lawn, right? Not new shoots. And again, remember, I want the impression of light coming through here with some dark passages on either side. The dark passages are important because they will add to the light in this um, photo. So I'm going to make sure I've got some dark here and some dark areas there. So let's work out where I want the dark. So I want a dark here. And I want a dark here. So I'm thinking through the pattern of lights and darks. And then I want some dark down here. In fact, I'm going to run that there. Dark down here. 
This is why you need to mix lots of paint. There. And then let's throw another dark up here. There. And maybe a line, something here. And here. So this is my pattern of, 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 of darks. And then, there we go. So all that paint is just being put onto the paper. Now I'll go and pick up, in fact, I'm going to pick up, clean my brush. So I want to use a bigger brush. So I'll go back in with a size 16. Try it. And it's drying very fast. I'm going to give it a little spray. You have to watch little areas like this because the masking fluid, in addition to a resist, tends to also um, push the paint away. And you can end up with little, sort of, almost like mini cauliflowers at the edge. So now I'm just stepping back and, and really looking at the abstract design. Now just hints at little shapes on the ground. What I've been doing is I'm sort of upping the amount of green here in the background. And the reason for that is it's going to be a, a reddish flower, right? So what's the complementary color of red? It's green. So by doing that, when I paint the flower with this sort of background, leaning a little bit to the, you know, the green, it will tend to make the flower pop into the foreground. Now, you know, my paper is still cockled. I need to dry it before I do anything else because if I try to uh, lift any of this it's going to damage the paper. All right now to get rid of the masking for those of you who haven't been through this process before the best way to lift it um, is not to be rubbing with your finger. I used to do that by the time you get it off your fingers are so sore. What you need is one of these. Uh, it's called a crepe eraser. You usually buy it and it's a block about this big for, you know, three or four dollars maybe. Um, I usually cut it up in, into quarters and I give some away because by the time I use one of these, you know, I'll be a much older man than I am now. But the advantage of this is that when you touch the paper, it just attracts to the, um, 
to the latex and lifts it very easily. This mark here is not a pencil mark. That's actually somewhere where I missed putting the masking fluid on and some paint has come through. But you can see why you have to make sure the paper's dry. Because if you try to do this when the background's wet, one, you'll smudge paint everywhere, but two, you increase the chance of damaging the paper. I did this reasonably well. There's not a lot of things that need to be adjusted. But something like this here, see this edge here is very raggedy. If I wanted to make that a little bit less raggedy, I could um, you know, get one of my these stiff brushes, dip it in the water, take almost all the water out, and then just lightly adjust that. In this case, I'm probably not going to worry about it. And when I come to paint the stems, I'm going to put some dark paint on that side anyway because it's away from the light, so it's not so um, important. These little shapes here, before I do anything else, again, I'll just get my stiff brush. And then just soften it. And just lift it before I do anything else and get rid of those. Now, this all I do with something like this is get a very fine brush, and this has got a you know super narrow point on it. In fact, I use it for my masking. Um, pick up some of the color and try and match the color. Just adding tiny little dabs. When that dries, the only people in the world that know what happened there is, is you and me. Fix this one. The trick's not to have too much water on your brush when you when you do that. So now it, it's really uh, relatively straightforward. The key thing is getting the tones right. And if I look at the colours we've got. This pink here, so obviously permanent rose is going to be a, a big part of the mixture. It's a little bit cooler than the permanent rose, so it'll have a bit more blue in it. So I'll just start by putting some clean water in my palette. The shadows are just going to be French ultramarine and a little bit of permanent rose will probably end up making the bulk of the shadows. I'm going to use Scarlet Lake and I'm going to really warm up some of these deeper areas. So I'll just get some permanent rose. And but the one thing to also look at is tone. We've only got a little bit of pink. And, and mostly they're going to be these white petals that I'll probably warm up with a very weak mix of maybe cat orange or, um, or raw sienna. I'll, I'll have a little think about that. 
but I'm going to start with this front petal and test the colour. And, and the rose is, is a very um, staining colour, so you don't need a lot of it. I'm going to add a bit of French ultramarine. This is probably not a bad tone because in addition to that, we've got these darker petals. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up some of this paint, bring it over here. And then into that, I'm going to add some more paint. And that will give me the contrast between that and that. I'm starting with this because that'll help me adjust various tones. And I start painting from the top of the pedal and work my way down. There's a little light patch there. I want it a bit lighter at the top, so I'm going to just lift just a little bit of that moisture. And then I'm just going to get a size 8 brush, take out some of the paint. I'm going to make this a bit stronger still. And we're just marking these veins. And you've got to get the angle right. This is what gives the form to this shape. And it's a bit darker down here, so I'll just add stronger paint here, here. We paint there, and that'll do. And that's fine for that petal. And obviously I can't work around it, because otherwise the pink paint would bleed into these lighter passages. While I've got the pink out, I'm going to work on this petal. It's, it's also in shadow, and the shadow we're going to go in and add as a separate layer. Right now I'm not worrying too much about the shadow. And I've got the same mixture. The other thing to remember is generally the water will flow downwards. This area here will stay workable much longer than the area up above. And I'm going to lift some of this and just lighten the tip a bit.
I could conceivably do this one here, and I'll just leave a little gap between this pedal and that pedal. In fact, I think I'll do that. And it's a bit lighter on this side. You're not going to lift very much because the permanent rose or alizarin crimson are very staining colours. And once they're on, they're the, one of the hardest to lift. But I only need to just hint at this tonal difference. The bottom of the petal down here, which is actually quite a bit darker, and it's in strong shadow, which we'll adjust later. I'll let that sit there for a bit. This here, I'm going to just turn it into a, a bud that's lost its outer layers and it's just getting ready to open. I'm basically just waiting for this area here to, to dry enough that I can go in and do the other petals. This one here, I don't need a lot of paint. I'll just start with some Oriole and Maybe a little bit of raw umber and a tiny bit of the turquoise. Now, you know, I'm sort of bouncing over different areas of this painting because I'm letting these dry. You could just do a petal, get the hairdryer out, finish it, and then move on to the next one. But if you do that, you have to make sure the paper cools down before you touch it. So now this is dried enough. I'm trying to avoid the hairdryer if I can, only because it can disturb the surface of the paint. So now I've got the main tones there. I've already got some depth to the flower. I'm going to put in the shadow shapes and then have a look to see if there's any further adjustments that need to be made. Let me mix some shadow colour. In this case, I'm just going to use some cobalt blue because it's sort of more the colour coming from the sky and a little bit of pink. And I know in the photo it looks grey, but can you see if I painted all the shadows grey, it's going to look very boring. And also the greys, a lot of that is just the printer. I can see all these reflected colours in here, even with the limitations of the printer. So I'm not going to dull this off in this case. I'm not going to add any burnt sienna to it, as I might if I was doing a shadows and a landscape scene. Do all this with a size 8 brush. So I'll start with a hard edge, and this is what we call a cast shadow, so it's cast by this shape here, or some other petal. Then I'll paint in from that very quickly before it starts to dry. So I'm always keeping that leading edge workable. I don't want this light passage to meet right at that point, so I might drag this around to here.
and clean my brush, tap it on the towel a little bit, and I'm going to come back and then soften these edges. And this is what we call a form shadow. So form shadows give you the form of the object. And then while it's wet, I'll do any other adjustments. So I'll dry the brush, lift out some of this colour. And then there's just a slight shadow here. And that will help bring this petal forward. So we'll just run that down to here. Clean my brush, take most of the moisture. And then immediately just soften it like that. Now this one, I've already put a shadow in, but I'm going to just strengthen it a bit. And just soften this edge. And I'm going to put a bit of a shadow on this side. Very weak, just to give it a bit of a curve. This petal still has some shadow on it, but I'm going to do this big shape first. And it's a little bit darker than these others, so I'm going to, in this corner, just add a bit more French ultramarine, a little bit more of a pink. And, you know, maybe a little bit of raw sienna too. That will grey out just a fraction. That'll do. I'll go back in and there's a few little highlights, so we'll lift some of that out. There's a lot more pink down here, so I'm going to um, pick up some of this pink colour here, and just drop that in wet on wet into this blue.
so this petal has a big shadow on it. Might make that just a bit stronger. I'll get some of this weaker shadow here. So this one's a bit tricky because you've got a combination of hard edges and soft edges. I'll just let that sit there for a bit. And then on this side, there's a more distinct shadow. And it goes over this white. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to soften some of these. Let me soften that and soften this up here. So that's bringing this forward. Sometimes you just got to get the hair dry. So here we've got a soft shadow on this side, which is what we call a form shadow because it helps define the form. Then we've got some sharp edges there and there. These are the cast shadows. So we'll go in and put that in. Start with the cast shadow. Quite strong permanent rose and a little bit of French ultramarine. This dark shape is important because it makes this petal come forward. Not so dark, yeah. Lift the odd little highlight. And then I'm going to put some, just a bit of a form shadow along here just to make this petal curl a bit.
And then in here, there's a, a really dark shape that separates this petal from this petal. It's really just very strong French ultramarine and, and the permanent rose. I might add a tiny bit of burnt sienna to it. something like that and then in here we've got another dark but it's a different color it's more of a quite a grayish color so I'm going to add some cobalt blue and burnt sienna with a little bit of the pink more texture here on the petal. This shadow needs to remain stronger. And again, for me, tone is more important than colour. So here we've got almost a sharp edge going into two soft edges. Comes all the way down to here. And a little bit more pink, I think, and these two merge together a bit. This is dry enough now. I want to just darken this shadow. I want this petal to stand out a bit more, so I'm going to darken this shadow behind it. 
So with this sort of painting, you're very much bouncing from one section to another, always adjusting your tones. And this is where you need a brush with a good point. You know, these are a bit too dark for these, so what I do in that case is usually just ramp up my darkest colours, which is the reds. which will bring them forward. Sometimes you can paint from the bottom up. One of the advantages of doing this is it keeps the first area you start painting wet because the moisture keeps falling back down. You know, I don't like this shape here. I'm going to cross over. This shadow was sort of impinging on this shape and wanting to come forward. And then down here. That works better. Now that tone actually works better with this over here. I'd like some more pink over here. Let me think about that. This thing here has a little shadow that goes into the white. Let's put the shadow here. It's going to have a bit of a shadow from the stem.
All right, I'm going to take a deep breath and do a bit of artistic license here. Uh, what I'm trying to fix here is I feel this shape just needed something, some pink over here, and I'm trying to work out how to design that um, while still sort of keeping this, this petal roughly where it is. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw in another petal here. Just going to make some space. And it's a lot easier to lift the blue green than it is to lift the pink. So I probably should have thought that through a bit more before I did anything. There we go. Try that. While that's cooling down, I'll just add a bit of form to these buds. Just some coriolan, a bit of a turquoise, maybe a little bit of raw umber. And I'm not bothering with all the little tiny hairs on these or anything like that. That starts getting too close to a botanical piece, which I like. I just don't think I've got the patience to, to do it. Then we'll just soften that. If you have too much water when you're softening, what instead of ending up with a little highlight, you effectively run all the colour across. The water content is very important. Let's cool down.
just adding a bit of texture at the bottom of the buds. Just on the edge here, that little petal will have a little cast shadow. That's got some lovely light on it. 